I'm in the art studio today and I decided to do just a quick little art lesson. Several of you have asked me to do some drawing lessons and that kind of thing. So I really think one of the most magical aspects of art, especially two-dimensional art, drawing or painting or even collage, is how to create the illusion of depth in a flat surface. So we all know that this surface of the paper or the canvas is just two dimensions, it's flat. Of course, it has a very thin volume and thickness, but to create the illusion of going into that space and not just having a flat surface is kind of a trick. You know, it's, it is like almost like a magic trick in a sense, but there are some techniques that can um, get you there that can really be helpful. One of those techniques is overlapping. So if um, shapes are just kind of set next to each other or around each other, it's going to appear more flat. Even like right now, it appears more flat with me, with me in the space of the frame. Whereas if I am to um, reach out my hand and overlap that, that creates depth, even in the flat surface of your camera or computer screen or wherever you're watching this, it's going to create more depth to overlap things so that you have a foreground, a middle ground, and then a background. So we're gonna talk about overlapping. Second thing we're gonna talk about is um, shading or, or value. So value contrast really is just the lightness or darkness of the mark on the surface. So the surface has a value or lightness or darkness. In this case, it is white paper. So we're gonna need a dark mark making tool to show up on that white paper. If we have a dark surface, such as a black paper, then we're gonna need a white or lighter mark making tool to show up on that. So value contrast, um, the more range of values that we have, the more depth is created. So if you just have black and white, it's gonna be very flat. If you have black, white, and five different gray sh shades or tones, it's going to create more of a sense of shading, volume, and depth in an object. Another thing that we're gonna talk about is scale. So we've talked about overlapping, um, we're gonna talk about shading or value, and then the third thing we're gonna talk about is scale. Scale is the largeness or smallness of something. So as you may have noticed when I put my hand out, my hand is going to be bigger than my face in the picture frame to create the illusion of depth. However, we know that my hand in real life is smaller than my face. You know, hands don't tend to be, you know, bigger than the person's face. So we're gonna talk about scale, how we create depth by making things in the foreground larger, things in the background smaller, and stacking them with that first rule of overlapping. The last and final thing that I'm gonna talk about is line or like the perspective of line that will draw us back into the picture plane. Um, some people use one point or two point or three point perspective. It doesn't matter which um, tool you're using, but perspective line, kind of like the train tracks or the road that disappears into the background, but it's wider at the front, but it's going to be like disappearing at some kind of a vanishing point in the background. That's what we're gonna talk about with line. So four things today, overlapping, we've got shading or value, and we've also got scale, which is the largeness or smallness of the object, whether it's a person or an animal or a tree, it doesn't matter. Um, the largest or smallness of things in the picture plane will create depth. And the fourth thing is line. So that perspective line that will pull us into the picture plane. I'm gonna be demonstrating some very basic level one techniques. So if you do not know how to draw, this is kind of why I'm doing the video, like just to get you interested a little bit. If you are in meetings and you wanna doodle on your notes paper, if you wanna doodle on a tablet, 
Or if you are in class and you're in art class and you wanna know how to jazz up your compositions better, really this will be a very fundamental, very basic level of instruction. Not gonna be doing any master pro level tricks that are you know insurmountable or unachievable for um, anybody that can just hold a mark making tool and make a mark on the paper you know, basically should be able to achieve most of what we do today. So let's get started with the first thing, which is overlapping. So the first thing that we wanna do is set up your paper in a position that is comfortable for you to reach with your arm. I'm standing up so I can reach out to this surface very easily and comfortably. If it's too low and you have to bend over, that's gonna strain your neck. If it's too high, it's also gonna strain your shoulder. So either have an easel where you're standing or sitting and at a comfortable arm's length, or have a table that tilts up if you're gonna be sitting at a table so that you're not hunched over something because that can really affect the freedom of movement in your arm and something like you know drawing circular forms or gestures are going to be more difficult. But for step one, we're gonna talk about overlapping. We wanna create the illusion of space inside this blank, two-dimensional white surface. So to do that, one step is to overlap. You can see that if I draw very simple circular forms like this, it appears just very flat. It doesn't matter, you know, what those forms are. They could be three different people, they could be three different cars, it doesn't matter, but to put them side by side, which is what a lot of children do in art, is to put one person and then the next person and then the dog, and just to kind of put things in the page like this. That doesn't create any sense of depth because they are just sitting next to each other on a flat surface. So to create depth, we are going to um, take those same forms and um, this one will be in the front. Now you always wanna draw the thing in the front first because if you draw the thing in the back first, then you have to erase lines. So then we're going to draw the second circle. This is circle number one, circle number two, and circle number three. <laughs> so we have number one. This is now number two, which is back here. And finally we have number three which is in the very back. So that creates a little bit of depth. That creates a sense of going back in space just by overlapping those forms. Now, in order to create more depth than that, just with flat shapes, we're gonna jump to the third rule, which is scale. So we talked about overlapping, then value, then scale. But for flat shapes, we're going to take number one, and we're going to make that um, number one big. Then we're gonna take number two, and we're going to make number two smaller, and we're gonna take number three, and we're gonna put it all the way in the back, okay? And if we were to take number three and even put it behind number two, that also achieves even more depth. So you can see with scale, we have actually changed the scale. Even just by changing the scale a little bit, with this, we create depth. If we change the scale with all three, we create even more depth. So um, that would be overlapping. So this is um, overlapping. This is overlapping plus scale. Now, moving on to the second rule, or backing up to that, would be to create value um, contrast within the form, or even within or between the forms. Value contrast is basically the lightness or darkness of something. And so this is just white on white with an outline, a black or dark outline around it. If we were to create maybe like a highlight and a sense of shadow. And again, these are just imaginary forms, 
but this the same rule applies for anything whether it's a person or a, or a animal or a tree or a car or whatever so if we're going to create you know a sense of um, gray tones and value contrast with lightness and darkness you can see that as the form gains levels of value contrast and those darker tones start to emerge that there's actually a, an illusion of depth that starts to happen the 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 circle starts to look more like a ball so you know value contrast or the lightness and darkness of something is going to be key in creating a, an illusion of space or three-dimensional quality within a flat surface now we can take that value contrast um, and i'm not going to be spending a lot of time because i want to make this go pretty quickly just to accomplish the lesson um, we can take that value contrast and add it to the overlapping where we then have a second, you know, one of those other spheres or circles appear in the background. Now, when it comes to a background um, level, it's a little bit more complicated just because you don't want as much value contrast in the middle ground or the background as in the foreground, but you still want a little bit of a sense of value, you know, to create the illusion of depth. And you also want it to be clear that those two forms are overlapping. So that is going to create a little bit more depth in the picture plane to have value contrast plus that overlapping so we have um scale also in play here because obviously these two circles one is larger one is smaller so you can see we've gone from the very flat uh, level of just circles to overlapping with a little bit of depth to the scale creating more depth to the um, shading or value contrast in here creating even a greater sense of depth. So last and certainly not least, we wanna create, and I've just kind of turned this upside down so we have space. We wanna create a sense of um, depth and implied space using what we call a horizon line. And so through line, the horizon line is basically the line at which everything disappears in space. So it's like a horizon line on the horizon. We're going to take our infamous circle now that we've created as the subject for this lesson and we're going to create a perspective using line. So we're going to take the uh, horizon line and put a little dot on the horizon line and draw from the top of the circle um, and the bottom of the circle to that dot. And that is going to tell us how small or how large this particular ball, say it's a bowling ball, for example, is going to be as it goes back in space. So this would be the bottom of the, the new circle back in space and the top. So the bottom and the top are going to be defined within this little term. Now, if there's one further back, that's maybe not overlapping. And even all the way back there, we're gonna have a fourth circle. So just to define these a little bit more, now using our sense of value contrast or lightness and darkness of the forms, we're going to kind of show how line or stacking these forms along a perspective line is going to create depth. So we are again trying to imply space because there is no actual space within this flat surface. So we are just implying it by use of lightness, darkness, overlapping, scale, and now line. 
So we're gonna kind of create, you kind of wanna just sketch out like a little highlight to create a light source for each of your bowling balls or pool balls or whatever these are. These are just imaginary forms. We don't even really know what they are. We don't have to know what they are, but we're just gonna add a little bit of shading really quickly to just define the fact that these are not flat shapes stacked. They're actually, you know, more three-dimensional forms. So we're just going to add a little bit of darkness and you can always kind of rub anything in with your finger to create a little bit more smoothness of the values. Now, with the overlapping, as I mentioned earlier, and this will be for a future lesson that's a little bit more complicated, um, as you go back into space, the value contrast decreases. It's something called atmospheric perspective, which we're not gonna spend much time on, but just so that you know, um, the value contrast is going to be decreasing as items go back in space um, because items that are closer to us are gonna have more detail, which means there's going to be more um, black to white value contrast, whereas items that are farther away are gonna have less detail and there's going to be less uh, value contrast. So now we're using this final fourth tool of perspective line or just line to achieve and create a sense of depth so that we have the idea of our eye creating this line, an implied line that goes back in space and we can see these little ball forms kind of as they go back in space achieve a sense of um, volume, depth, mass, etc. Now, of course, anybody that was gonna actually do a real drawing, we're gonna, we want to totally work this a lot more. But this should achieve just that very basic lesson. I don't wanna get too complicated because again, I want everybody to be able to do this on their own at home, even if you've never drawn since, you know, everybody's drawn at some point. But if you haven't drawn since you were like five years old, or if you stopped drawing at 10 years old or whatever, because we all draw in school, um, you know, this will be hopefully just a refresher course for you that will empower you and give you the basic tools to just draw some basic forms and feel confident in your ability to create depth. So we've come quite a far ways from these initial circles, which were very flat, um, to that overlapping, to adding in the scale, to adding in the value contrast, to then stacking those shapes on a horizon line and creating that further illusion of depth. So I hope that that helps um, with just you know a few tricks, few few tools to put in your toolbox to start your adventure with drawing. Or if you already are drawing and maybe you're in an art class or something, just consider instead of arranging your shapes, even if you do abstract painting or drawing, Consider overlapping your forms, uh, pushing scale, largeness and smallness of things, um, adding in that full range of value from black to white with several shades of gray in between, or if you are using colors, use dark colors and light colors and a lot of different um, color value just to kind of pop your composition and create that illusion of space, to pull the eye into that two-dimensional picture plane so that it looks like we could actually walk into there and it's not just a flat 2D surface. So you can see that here we have the one-point perspective of like a tunnel with the circle, the flat circle, and then we're using that vanishing point from the corners of it to go back into space to draw us back into space inside that tunnel and it creates a certain amount of depth but we aren't going to achieve that depth too much unless we put a person or something kind of like walking into that tunnel or overlapping it in some way if we want to draw from the top of the form in a one point perspective outward instead of inward in the form we're drawing from the top and bottom out to the horizon line, 
then we can start to stack those forms and create um, more of a sense of instead of a hollow circle with a tunnel it's a solid circle and each solid circle then is kind of stacked um, on top of the next solid circle so basically that means that we have created more like bowling balls going back in space or pool balls or some kind of three-dimensional balls as opposed to a hollow circle going back in space, if that makes sense. So this utilizes um, step one, overlapping, because these are overlapped. It utilizes step two, which was value or shading, because we have the gray tones and the black tones throughout the form and not just white on white circles like we started with. And then it also uses the third aspect of scale because these balls in the front are larger than the small balls in the back. And finally, it uses the tool of line because we created um, an implied line which of course we drew an actual line from the top and the bottom of this, but when we erase that line, what's left is actually still an implied line, meaning our eye is still going to go from the first ball back to the vanishing point because there's kind of an implied line through these balls that we're, our eye is sucking back to this horizon line where everything disappears, okay? So overlapping value scale and line are four keys to unlocking the sense of space inside of a flat surface. And you can see that where we started with these three circle shapes, white on white, um, flat circles, to overlapping, to adding in the scale, to adding in the value contrast, to finally adding in the sense of line to create perspective, we have achieved the four keys to implied space. Implied space means that you can't actually go into the surface, it's obviously flat. <laughs> but it's implied that it's not flat because we're starting to go back um, with our eyes, starting to look like there's something there. Just like your phone screen is flat, but it looks like I am in front of this paper and I am somehow moving in your phone screen. Um, and that is all just due to light contrast, light and dark, it's due to overlapping of forms. It's also due to the sense of scale because one thing is larger than the thing behind it and, and also line, um, although right now we're in a very tight space, so there's not a whole lot of perspective going on in this situation um, with me in front of the camera and the paper. But hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, I was using a black colored pencil for this, which was probably not a good idea because um, I can't erase it very well because colored pencil is really hard to erase. Um, however, I did want you to see all of the marks that I'm making, and this is not about creating some kind of a fancy drawing, but anybody can create this kind of a drawing, and then you can start thinking of, well, what if I want to do this with four people or five people or houses or trees or chairs or fruit or anything else, and it just starts opening up a world of possibilities some people do prefer the more flat and abstract space that's created just with overlapping or scale, and you can achieve some of that or just a very simple close-up um, piece just with overlapping scale and value. But um, if you wanna achieve like a full range of depth, then it will help to create um, that depth using these four aspects or tools or keys to creating implied space 
in a picture plane. So I hope that helps. I'm gonna show you just a few examples of finished work just to inspire you that these very simple tools are applicable for a higher level of sophistication in finished work. This little drawing I did of Langston, you can see utilizes some of these keys of creating depth by overlapping because he's overlapping the fence and then the, the deck is overlapping his body. So that creates a sense of stacking and perspective. Also, you can see with the use of black to white and a lot of different gray tones, it creates that sense of volume and depth as well. And finally, um, the scale, the deck is of course much larger than the fence, which isn't necessarily like the wood planks aren't larger than the wood planks in the fence in real life, but of course the scale of the foreground is going to be larger than the scale in the background um, for the purpose of perspective. And finally, that sense of line, the line going back at a very dynamic angle as opposed to being just a straight line. So that kind of is an example of use of overlapping and volume and um, scale, as well as the value shading and the use of, of um, line for perspective. Let's look at one more piece. Um, this is a little drawing that obviously uses line as well as overlapping. And this collage utilizes also the sense of the horizon line for a sense of depth as well as remember I talked about there being more contrast of black to white in the foreground and more detail than in the background with atmospheric perspective there's less detail and less contrast and so that also creates kind of that sense of depth in this piece there's also a sense of like the line and the scale with the driftwood being larger than the tree in the background with this figure being larger than the figure sitting on the end of the dock and also a um, sense of like so there's scale there's overlapping and also the the line work and the value contrast so all four keys are present really in most artwork now um, if you want more of these quick tip lessons on drawing or painting or sculpture or collage or any kind of art form i would be happy to continue to do just like a little series of quick lessons that are applicable for anyone regardless of whether you're brand new to drawing um, or whether you're pretty experienced but you've kind of forgotten some of the tools that are available to you to use as a resource for um, just kind of jazzing up your compositions. One thing that we all have in common as human beings, almost all of us have drawn at some point. So art is something that really is a universal human experience. Most children make images in school putting a mark making tool to a surface and creating some type of image. So it's a very universal human experience that has been going on for tens of thousands of years, even possibly a hundred thousand years or more, depending on how accurate some of the dating methods are for some of the cave paintings and drawings and hieroglyphs and things like that. So when you go back to ancient history, there was drawing. There was drawing before um, a lot of other inventions and human activities. So it's one of the universal things that brings us together. And I think it's also a great way to just expand your mind, your ideas, put your ideas on paper. Some people use words, some people use images. And I like art because art and images are actually a universal language you don't need a translator. People around the world understand what a circle is, you know, what a line is, and what a human being is, hopefully. So art is kind of a universal language, and that's what I love so much about it. So I hope to see you on lesson two for these quick tips and tricks.